Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some exciting news that deals with the fact that folks at Blender Foundation have just released the 2021 roadmap. So, just in case you're wondering what is going to be happening with Blender, you know, in 2021, right now you will be getting a full gist about that and also see some of the things that have been happening previously before now. So, sometime last week we talked about the fact that the Blender 3.0 version, the Alpha, has been released and it was quite exciting to actually take a look at that. Although it is still within its Alpha, there's a lot of cool things that will potentially be happening to Blender within the year. Now, for those who would like to actually take a look and see some of the updates or, you know, see some of the things that's been happening behind the scene, you can go over to the daily builds and you would see some things here. So Blender 3.0 Alpha is right here. You know, it's waxing strong. You can see the size is getting bigger. And of course, 2.93 has just jumped into beta. And uh, for anyone who would like to use this, I would strongly suggest use 2.93, test it out, see if there's any bugs so that the folks at Blender Foundation can actually work on it make it even way stable for shipping. Meanwhile, for those who are still working with Blender 2.83, the 14 Alpha is here. And uh, this one is contributing to the LTS series. And for those who have no idea what this LTS series is about, we will definitely go in and talk about those. So the LTS, which is the long-term support, is a huge thing that the folks at Blender Foundation have been working on following the 2.9 series. And if you want to see more about this, I'm going to put this link in the description where you can check it out. So they're continuing with the whole plan for the 2.0 series so blender 2.93 will be released sometime in may all right so much like blender 2.83 the lts long-term support meaning that it will be maintained for two straight years and you might want to take a look at the 2.83 and see when it will be ending sometime in 2022 we also know that 2.9 will be ending sometime in 2023 the same goes for 3 and the same goes for 3.4 now i have no idea why the naming scheme scheme is kind of changing because you know we get the 2.9 we get the 3 and then we get the 3.4 now hopefully there's going to be a better explanation about that but either way this is super exciting to see and for sure let's dive back and talk more about the roadmap so if you dive back and take a look at the roadmap you can also see that the folks at nvidia are actually trying as much as possible to implement the usd so nvidia's industry quality work done for the usd importer is already being previewed and it should actually be seen in 2.93. So we've talked about the fact that you can test out this thing. So in case you want to test out the USD thing, you can. So if you go right here, scroll all the way to where you see the experimental branches, simply click that and you can scroll to test out how you can import and also work with USD. So that should be somewhere around here. All right, so you can test this thing out and you can see it for yourself. I mean, if you just want to test out just the USD version, you can test this one out. But if you would like to test the whole thing together, you can grab this and, you know, test out 2.93, please. So with that said, if you also want to take a look at some of the projects that they're looking forward to add in the 3.0 series, these are some of them. So coming in early summer, a usability workshop will be held in Amsterdam with Blender designer William Reinisch. And you can see that there are some stuff that has been talked about UI. Who knows? So let's just keep our fingers crossed and believe that once this workshop is done, we might be seeing some pretty cool UI or UX updates. All right. So certain projects have been going on right now, and these are the projects that are within the roadmap that will probably be taken into account for the year 2021. So we've already talked about the asset browser. We've talked about the post library, and it is looking very juicy as we speak. The asset browser actually backdates to 2016 when it was simply called the asset management. And moving further, we've seen a couple of iterations. We've actually had our hands on it with test study with the 2.93 alpha and for sure we probably will be seeing this in 3.0 and moving down we can see a statement where it says that it is likely that the post library will become the first target for the asset browser project it will be completely integrated in both the viewport and animation editors and help focus the asset browser project in time for blender 2.93 so right here you can already see so let's just click on this image so right here you can already see the pose library all right so the pose library sort of looks really cool we'll love it and uh, we've already talked about how cool this is going to help your workflow so hopefully this might be coming so if we get to see the pose library and then we get the asset browser it's actually two things that makes a lot of sense 
that we like. So Library Override is also something that we'll be getting as it's one of the projects that we'll be taking on in 2021. So in terms of overriding several parts of your model, instead of using the old animation proxy system, which is currently in progress right now, this might proceed to make your next workflow better. And of course, we do have the geometry node. So we've talked about this geometry node. We're excited about it. And of course, a huge shout out to everyone within the community that has actually helped make the geometry node what it is. So something that we already looked at the geometry node some time ago is the idea behind the hair node system. So we've taken a look at some of them. So let's go ahead. We've seen the collection node, which is really, really nice. And of course, some other nodes are coming to this right now, which deals with separate join, the add, remove, the set action, set material, and also set colliders. And we also did talk about some other cool new modules that has to do with the geometry node that might be coming in Blender 2.93. So we've also talked about the idea that there is a hair module which is currently coming and for those who like to see these modules maybe you want to see these things and read them up for yourself you can go over to the module section i'll probably put this link in the description as well where you can read it out so we've talked about the hair node and uh, this looks pretty nice of course it's going to make a lot of sense if we can get that yeti kind of workflow that already exists in maya in blender so this actually works in a very interesting way and it looks very similar to what you can get with yeti so you do have a model then you have a map and then you have a scalp and you use the nodes to get some effects we also have the node tool prototype so this is also a pitch that has been made and this is more for those who would want to create assets and you want to use these assets to you know paint across several parts of your model this makes sense so the asset tools we've already teased the asset tool we talked about some of the things that will be coming with this one and for sure this is going to make your geometry node setup very reusable by many persons so you can make something and then you can transfer it to someone else and those people can actually work with it and even do way more cooler stuff with what you've just made Vulcan is also something that will be coming and this is also another project that the folks at Blender Foundation are focused on and the drawing back end is being prepared to receive Vulcan. And of course it is worth knowing that there is no immediate performance boost expected from Vulcan's integration at this point but however the folks at Blender Foundation are looking to future proof this and make it ready for specific platforms. Grease Pencil is getting a huge update with Blender 2.93 coming out and of course the emphasis this year is on the new line modifiers that deals with both storyboard, input output, beta Bayesian and also editing features in 2.5D and also in 2D. LTS, of course, we've talked about that and Cycles is getting better as we will be getting the 10th anniversary of Cycles come April the 23rd. So if you would like to actually stick around for that one, if you go over to another link, which I'm going to put in the description, it will take you over to the Blender's page and that is going to be on YouTube and you would see that there is a live streaming named X that is currently waiting. So you might want to, you know, hop on that one and get informed by what and what the folks at Blender Foundation are working currently on and also see the huge milestone that they've actually achieved for the past 10 years while creating and also making cycles better. Animation pipeline is also something that they're working on, especially for those who like to do things like future film production. USD, we've talked about USD, the folks at NVIDIA are also working hand in hand with the folks at Blender Foundation to make sure that this one comes and we are also getting the 3.0 user interface workshop. So hopefully we will be getting tons and tons of cool things coming and of course finally there's a section known as surprises and these surprises might be a couple of things that can be considered as ideas that might ship themselves in 2021 and these deals with dynamic particles, collection nodes, restrictive override collection settings for persistent input output and baking. There is also the real time viewport video compositor, snapping improvement, brush manager for painting and sculpting. This is definitely going to be awesome. Mesh editing optimization, awesome as well and also independent physics clock in viewport. And to me, these are very interesting ideas and also developments that once they come over to Blender 3, they might actually change the way we work with Blender. So tons of cool things are right here. For those who like to read these things up for themselves, link is gonna be in the description. Huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for making this one possible. Links to this is gonna be in the description as well. So just in case you wanna grab it. And of course, links to some of these things that we've already talked about 
is going to be in the description so you can do well to check these things out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.